long time, been a long time coming. Whoa. whoa. Day three of our fairy tale reread. Uh, we are on chapter three, and all kinds of exciting things happen in this. It begins with Rosie going to see Mimi Sutton, who is a highly successful writer who was then turned literary agent, and every one of her books sort of gets a movie deal. And it's really funny because I was writing about publishing, not knowing anything about publishing. Uh, and the way that I describe her office, when I was finally asked to go uh, to see everyone at HarperCollins, their, their previous offices, they're in different offices now, uh, were basically like the ones that I'd, I talked about in the book, which was really surreal because I didn't know what I was kind of totally making up. And then to kind of walk into the set of one of the scenes of my book, was a little bit surreal. Uh, we also find out in this scene about the Kowalski's family. Um, everyone who works at Rosie's florist shop um, consider themselves to be family. So Ed, Rosie and Marnie. And you get a bit more of Marnie's story in this chapter. I love her. She's very sort of kooky and on the surface a bit ditzy and, and a bit of an airhead. But actually you find out why uh, she's decided to be the way she is. And, and her story, which actually is it's quite it's quite sad where she comes from and then and then kind of how she's managed to turn her life around so that's really lovely one of the things in here that is to do with the Kowalski family and people looking out for each other is that Rosie uh, persuades Ed to come along to see the opening night of Marnie's community theatre performance which is the most pretentious thing you've ever come across and actually was really inspired by my uh, my degree I did a degree in performance art uh, which was as weird as it sounds. It wasn't supposed to be, I thought it was performing arts, but it wasn't like that at all. Uh, so it's kind of based on that. I'm gonna read you a little bit of that because it's one of my favorite scenes in the book. So Rosie has dragged out Ed along uh, to come and see it. So remind me again why we're willingly inflicting this torture on ourselves tonight, Ed remarked, looking at the other equally unenthusiastic members of the audience. We're here for Marnie, I replied, trying to look interested in the Xeroxed program, but seeing only spelling mistakes such as directors with two R's and tragic with a K. We promised. But it's community theatre, he protested. It's like death, only much slower. I mean, come on, Rosie, look around you. Nobody wants to be here. This place is worse than Edgar Allan Poe on 24-hour repeat. Oh, wait, no. I think I've just seen him leaving because it's too depressing. Be quiet and enjoy the experience. It's Marnie's play, part of the Kowalski's family, remember? Ed's shoulders dropped in defeat. Sure, I get it. So they do that, they go and watch it, and it's a really, really long play, and then they end up watching it just for Marnie to do two lines, uh, which Ed, as you can imagine, completely bemoans. But it's one of the things that I love about it. I tried to sort of um, show, there's a lot of action that takes place in the book actually in Kowalski's, but then there's also a lot about life in New York and the kind of things that they go and see and the other places that they visit. Uh, and I tried to make it so that you felt like you were in New York when I wrote the book. Now, I mentioned yesterday uh, that I was going to tell you about the inspiration for Kowalski's. Now, I have a confession to make. I didn't know anything about New York when I started writing the book. I, I decided that I wanted to research it because I couldn't afford to go there. Uh, and at the same time, I got a DVD of You've Got Mail. And part of the DVD extras uh, were all the locations that they used for filming uh, for filming the, the film and because I loved all the locations in that I that's what made me fall in love with the Upper West Side of New York and that's what made me decide to set a story there. Now where Kowalski's is is one block up from the location of the shop around the corner that they used in the movie and that's literally because I just thought I really like this area where can we go and actually there is a liquor store there called Corner 68th wine and liquor shop and it is the it literally goes round the corner of West 68th Street and Columbus uh, Avenue so if you ever go to the Upper West Side and you go there you will see that shop and that is where uh, Kowalski's is based and a few years ago somebody went to New York after reading Fairy Tale of New York uh, and they sent me a photo of just a few doors down from where I set Kowalski's, there's now a florist shop, which there wasn't when I first started re uh, researching the book, which is lovely. I love that. So there we go. Tomorrow, chapter four, and a little bit more about Nate Amy, where he came from, where the idea came from, uh, the person who inspired it, because there was actually somebody that I saw that inspired 
inspired it and I'll tell you all about that tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for reading along and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Been a long time, been a long time coming. Whoa.